Thank you, and I uh, appreciate you all having me on today. It's, uh, this all started back in October 22nd, 2003. I was superintendent of schools in Missouri, and uh, I, had, uh, I had a born-again experience. And I was, uh, it was so radical that I went from uh, being a double-minded man, I'd say, into uh, seeking and hungering to serve the Lord. Well, I was still superintendent of schools, and for nine years I had had the uh, Ten Commandments up in school, the two school districts that I had uh, been superintendent at, and I had uh, a Bible on my desk, a cross on my office wall, and on Veterans Day I had a prayer said for the boys and girls that are getting killed in Iraq. Well, about four months after my born and again experience, uh, that morning first, that morning of my born again experience, a new ministry was born. And if you'd ever told me I would have a ministry or be speaking at uh, pulpits, I'd have said you were not here in a fruitcake. <laughs> but uh, the good Lord has uh, different ideas with how dire our direction of our life would be. Well, he, uh, about four months later, I was sued in federal court. And wow. uh, it, uh, they wanted, uh, eventually they wanted me to take the Ten Commandments down Bible, the cross, and never have another prayer for veterans or children or anyone. And uh, because of that prior experience with the good Lord, he gave me the strength to say, no, I can't do that. Because the children, I can't look, I told him, I said, I can't look ahead five years from now. And uh, I tell the children to bite their tongues off and let it fall on the floor rather than say anything unkind to someone. I tell them to stand up for what's right even if no one's watching. And to stand up for what's right, even if you stand alone. I said, I can't look down the road five year, years from now and see a young man that is uh, getting ready to make a decision that could take his soul to hell for eternity. And he looked back and said, they were just words by Mr. T. I said, I've got to stand up. And, and, and so the, the ministry uh, that we do, uh, the first thing was that in the education of our young, uh, I had been just by gifts of the good Lord, I've been, been made one of the top experts in the world on that. And I know that's presumptuous and sounds arrogant for me to say that. And it's Perhaps a little. Just, just something that he gave me. That's great. And uh, to recognize where our government system has been taking our children, or our children have been uh, leaving their faith, uh, nine out of ten of them almost. They've been a uh, higher incidence, uh, over 8,000 per day are coming down with STDs. I don't know if you're aware of this, from 12 to 25 years old. Wow. Uh, four and a half million children molested in, in our education system in the last decade. You know, all these things uh, to redefine and take the kids away from God, that's, that's the education we have right now. So because it was atheistic and pagan, and they could not marginalize me, it upset them so much because they, here I was, I've been on state committees. I've been president of the Ozark School Superintendents for four years. I had been the uh, uh, state chairman of the Sportsmanship Committee. And, and God had uh, just put me in position to be able to get word out to people, here's what's going on. If you love your children, run as fast as you can from the government education system. Now, this wouldn't make a lot of educators real happy because most of us have an educator in our family or two. Sure. You know, my sure. wife's an educator. You know, my, I have uh, sisters and nieces and nephews that are in education but the reality is they don't control the curriculum and someone's philosophy will come forth in our education system and in 1962-63 we decided it wasn't going to be God we thought we were smarter than God and we started turning things around so our, our system right now is atheistic and pagan and every school government school in this country has a cancer within it and you give me three days in any school system and I'll find things that will make their parents puke if they knew it was being taught to their children. Okay, is that a little bit controversial? <laughs> a little <laughs> so, bit, a little bit. So uh, anyway, but uh, I was put, I uh, had my first Shake the Nation, and it was, I called it uh, Getting Past the Rhetoric, Standing in Harm's Way for the Children's Souls, because it has to be about our children. We've got to stand up for those that, as fathers, as men, start being men again. We're looking for men with a little Christian male testosterone in this country again. 
You know, we've been so feminized since the late 60s that, that and, and it's in the teaching, it's in everything. It's in the many pulpits. And we've got to have men start being men again like they were as they founded this country and for many decades, and uh, you know, we had men that were men. And uh, so we, we, we try to have the Shake the Nations. We've done them from San Diego to Boston and many, many uh, places in between. And it, it's, again, it's a wake-up call. We were doing this before the, sh the uh, Tea Party started. And, and we take it a, a level past the Tea Party. Guys, there's, it's not just about talk. It's not about meeting and just talking. Uh, we were telling them uh, when they did the 9-12 project, you know, a, couple, a million and a half people showed up out there, and then they went home. you got to do something. It's got to be about action. You know, you, we've sure. got to be active. And so this time we're saying, okay, let's get some people out there. Let's get them into the uh, offices out there, which is, which is what happened yesterday when we were out in D.C. Let's, get, let's go in there. And we even were, uh, some of my friends uh, were arrested out there, for, uh, for uh, being in Nancy Pelosi's office and, and uh, tearing up the uh, health care reform bill and throwing it on the floor in her office and outside the office, you know. And uh, so we have, uh, uh, we've got to uh, go past the point of no return. Like our founding fathers that signed the Declaration of Independence, they sat there, guys, they knew that they'd be hung if they were caught once they signed that declaration. Sure. We've got to have men that say, okay, I'm there. You know, it's, it's, it's no more talk. Enough's enough. Our children are going to face things that are unimaginable if we don't. We are becoming more and more slaves all the time. So this, these Shake the Nations were to educate, tell people what's going on, and then give them ways. Hey, guys, this is, these are things you need to do if you're going to uh, take this country back for, for uh for God, family, and country. If you're not going to take this country back, then be ashamed. If you're not going to do anything, you should be ashamed. Just like in Patriot. I don't know if you saw that movie or not, but Mel Gibson's character decided not to get involved, and he watched as one of his children was killed right in front of him, and another one was taken off to be hung. He takes his two youngest boys, goes and saves that person, comes back, tucks them in bed in that, that night, goes out and sit and think of the anguish you would have if you just lost your child, someone sure. you dearly loved. And it was very telling what happened next. His sister-in-law walks into the room, and she said, you have nothing for which you should be ashamed. And his reply should ring to every dad and mom and grandmother and grandfather when he said, I'm ashamed because I've done nothing. And that's where we need the shame to come from. We were all born for this moment in time, just like Esther and David and Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were born for their moment in time. I don't know you guys, you know, it's the first time we've met, for sure. but you were born for this moment in time, you know, and, and so we've got to stand, and, and I, I just want to tell you right now, I'm going to promote your show, because we need, just like I have some of my best friends, they have uh, radio talk shows that speak the truth, you know, and they probably got a, a, a target on their head because of that, <laughs> and, and you all, as you put out truth, because the mainline media will not do that. They will, uh, let's, let's, instead of just calling an outright lie, they give a spirited rendition of the truth where they hold back enough that they can manipulate the minds of the people in a certain direction. That's what they're doing, and it's on purpose. They have an agenda, you know, just like the education system right now. It has an agenda. Here we are, the, we've been until recently the, mo the wealthiest country in the world. You know, we were, and we at one time were first in, in education. Now we're near last in reading and math and science. Why? We spend no money.